Hello everyone, Soberoni of GNA Reviews here, bringing you a video on the upcoming guaranteed gacha that will be dropping with the anniversary event in FGO NA. Yep, you heard me right, we will be getting a GSSR gacha in a little over a week when we get the anniversary event. And for those of you who are not familiar with what a GSSR is, it's basically a special gacha that costs paid Saint Quartz to roll, but will guarantee you an SSR servant. And this GSSR is going to be slightly different from the previous ones. Normally they cost 30 Saint Quartz, but starting with this anniversary, the gacha will only cost 15 paid Saint Quartz, which is about $16 US plus tax, so it's a bit more affordable. This guaranteed gacha is also going to be class based, which means you can roll for whichever class you need servants in, whether that be Saber, Lancer, Archer, or even extra classes. And this video is going to be designed to help you in deciding which class you should be rolling for. I'm going to give you my top 5 recommendations on which banners I think give you the most bang for your buck. And just as a little side note, even though this is a top 5 list, it is not a linear list from worst to best, but rather my best recommendations based on your personal situation and how much value each banner has to offer. So with that said, let's start with number 5. And the first banner that I would recommend taking a serious look at is the Lancer Gacha. This is especially great for anyone who needs a strong boss killer servant, especially if you're entering the Lost Belts and you need a powerful servant to build your team around. There are a number of really strong boss killers that you can grab from this banner. First up, we have Tamamo. While she isn't the strongest Lancer in the game, she's an absolute beast of an anti-male unit, and a lot of the bosses you will be encountering, especially in the Lost Belts, are going to be male enemies. And a lot of the Archer enemies are male as well, so she definitely comes in handy. We also have Karna and Skahawk on this banner, and they're both incredibly strong anti-divine servants, and there are a ton of divine servants in the Lost Belt chapters. So there's no shortage of usage for them, they're also among the top 2 damage dealers in the Lancer class. But no one is a bigger damage dealer than Enkidu, who has the highest NP damage in the game after his interlude, so he's definitely a powerful servant who's well worth building a team around. And then there is Brynhilda, who herself is a very strong boss killing servant, but can also be a very versatile crit support, which makes her a welcome addition to any kind of buster team. Outside of the single target Lancers, you can also pick up Aresh or Lancer Artoria, both of whom are very good farming servants. Overall, this banner contains a lot of high power servants who are particularly good within the Lost Belt boss fights. And there's also a lot of limited and story lock servants on this banner as well. However, do be aware that there isn't much variety in this banner, just a lot of single target boss killers. And this may not be as appealing to you if you already have a strong Lancer, as there's only a minimal upgrade between them. And next up we have the Berserker banner. This is my pick for the best banner for newer players, as Berserkers basically let you blaze through the early portions of the story. And there are definitely some standout quality servants available on this banner. First up we have Mysterious Heroine X Alter, who is one of the best servants in the game if you're fortunate enough to pull Scotty. There's also a bunch of really strong boss killers in Kintoki, Ku Alter, and Hijikata who are all capable of pulling out absurd damage numbers, with Ku Alter in particular being one of the best servants in the game overall. And Raiko is another great pickup from this banner, as she's a top tier crit servant and someone who's capable of farming nearly any wave of enemies. And if you're lacking a top tier buster support servant like Merlin or Waver, then you can pick up Nightingale, who makes for an excellent substitute. And finally, there's Vlad, who may not be as immediately useful as some of the other servants in this banner, but he does receive a lot of buffs that make him a lot better, and he becomes one of the best options if you're looking for a tanky bazooka. Berserker. Overall, this is the perfect banner for you if you're a newer player, as Berserkers basically unlock easy mode for the majority of the early story, as one good Berserker can basically carry you through half of the game. And there's also plenty of limited and story locked servants available on this banner. 
On the downside though, a lot of these servants aren't as useful for the late game chapters like the Lost Belts. There's also a large power gap between many of them, for example between Vlad and Kualter. And if you're someone who already has some good buster supports, then you're not going to find Nightingale as useful. Coming in at number 3, we have the Archer Class Banner. Much like with the Lancer class, the Archer class is made up of pure power. There are a ton of top tier servants on this banner, but unlike the Lancer class, the Archer class is especially excellent when it comes to farming. So if you're someone who's in need of some really good farming servants, this may be the banner that you want to roll. To start off with, we have Gil and Ishtar, both of whom remain among the best servants in the game, whether it be for farming or for boss killing. And if you're lucky enough to get either of them, you basically will never need another archer for the rest of the game. But there are other good options as well, like Tesla and Napoleon, who are great farmers, and Napoleon can even complement other buster teams as he is a semi-support who can fill a variety of roles. But the archer banner isn't just about farming. There are also some strong single target servants available as well. Archer Artoria is one of the best art servants in the game and she's perfect for arts looping teams. Moriarty and Orion are also very strong boss killers as Orion's anti-male damage is unmatched. While Moriarty, much like Napoleon, can play a good semi-support buffer role once he gets his interlude. And even Arjuna who many consider to be the weakest of the Archer class is still actually quite good for farming. So overall, I think this is a great banner to roll for as it is very low risk. Almost all of the servants in it are strong in all phases of the game, and you also have a very good chance of getting a top tier farmer. If there is one downside to this banner though, it's that it's very limited in its variety. I hope you love AoE Buster Servants because that's about half of the servants on this banner. Coming in at the number 2 spot, we have the Caster Class Gotcha. Now as you may know, this gotcha includes Waver, Tamamo, and Merlin, aka the 3 best servants in the game. And that's pretty much who you should be aiming for if you're rolling this banner. If you're lacking all of those servants, then I highly recommend rolling this banner because the chance at getting any one of them is absolutely worth it. They're all game changing. But outside of those three, there are other strong pickups in this banner as well, especially if you need someone who can go after assassins. Anastasia and Da Vinci are excellent farming servants, capable of noble phantasm spamming and looping within certain arts teams. Nero Caster is great not only for farming, but she's also a premier boss killer and can provide some limited support as one of the best offensive supports in the game. While Sanzo and Ilya are both capable of effective boss killing, Sanzo through her NP spam and Ilya through her gigantic burst damage. And even Sherazadi, who is a bit more niche, can be good for some stall teams and in some more specific boss fights and challenge quests. Overall, this banner contains the top 3 best servants in the game, it has some good offensive caster options, and there's a good variety of servants, from supports, to farmers, to boss killers. However, on the downside, this is a very high risk, high reward banner, as your chances of getting one of those top 3 servants is fairly slim. There's also not as many limited or story lock servants on this banner, most of them are available in the general gacha. And just like with the berserker banner, there is a huge power gap between a lot of the servants in this class. For example, between Sherazadi and Nero Caster. And last but not least, my pick for the most valuable banner that you should consider rolling in the GSSR is the Extra Class Banner. Now this is going to be the one that I'm personally going to roll, and I think it's great for any late game players who already have a plethora of good servants in all the other classes. But it's also very good for anyone who's looking to collect some really rare servants, as many of the servants on Raid Up here are limited or story locked. And this is also a very good banner for anyone looking for challenge quest capable servants or late game boss killers. Basically, if you're in the late game, this is the one you really want to look at. As far as the highlights of this banner go, we have Abigail and Hokusai, 
who are both great counters to most of the Lost Belt bosses, with Hokusai herself being one of the best offensive arch servants in the game and excellent for farming. While Abigail is able to fill a variety of roles, including boss killer and support. And then we have Kiara and Okita, who, while not top tier, are both highly useful and practical farming servants. You will be getting a lot of usage out of both of them just for general farming purposes, and Kiara can double as a great ruler killer if you're lacking an Avenger. And if taking down challenge quests is your thing, then you can't go wrong with Holmes, Amakusa, and Jean. All three of them are top tier challenge quest servants who excel in boss fights and tough content. And then we have other top tier servants like Dante's who when combined with Scotty is arguably the best farmer in all of FGO. Jalter and Melt are also there and both are excellent boss killers capable of taking on the most difficult Lost Belt enemies as well as any challenge quest that you may run into. Even outside of the 5 stars, you have a great chance of picking up Salieri as he's the only 3 star extra servant, so you have a great shot at getting him to a very high NP level even though he's a story lock servant. Gorgon and Lobo also have a good chance of appearing as they are the 4 star extra class servants and they can be a nice little bonus on top of whatever 5 star you end up getting. Overall, in my opinion, this banner has a lot going for it. It is very low risk as all of the servants are either top tier or they're very high usage and practical servants. There's also a huge amount of variety in this banner. You have pure supports, you have damage dealers, you have hybrid servants, and you have great farmers. And finally, almost all of the servants who appear on this banner are either story locked or limited. However, the one big drawback to this banner is that it's full of servants, so the chance of getting a specific servant that you may want is very low. And those are my picks for the top 5 GSSR banners that you should consider rolling. Again, it all comes down to your personal circumstances, so I hope I've offered good recommendations that you will take a look at. And if you'd like to know more about any of the servants that are appearing on any of these banners, I've included a link to my servant spotlight playlist in the description down below. I have full spotlights that go into detail on every single servant that's going to be on these banners, so do check that out if you haven't already. And if this video did help you or you enjoyed it, please make sure you hit that like button, and if you really enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. If you haven't already, do join the party over on our Discord, follow us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And until next time, this is Sobroni signing out. Later.